Welcome to Thursday with Pas uh, Coffee with the Pastor. Uh, I hope you've been praying this week. Our country sure needs it. We've had all kinds of horrible things. I, I hope that you've been praying every day, pouring your heart out to God for racial reconciliation, getting rid of evil and, and destruction. There's a lot of demons in our country right now, and I, we need to pray, pray hard. Well, today I want to talk about a different type of prayer and one that probably we Baptists don't talk nearly enough about. And, uh, and then also I want to talk about a prayer that's related to it, but that i am just been familiar with the last couple of years. And that's the prayer of contemplation. And then also the prayer of vision and prophecy or pro prophetic prayer. But let's start with the contemplation. How can I talk about being contemplative? I've read Thomas Merton. He's helped me a lot understanding what prayers of contemplation is. But let me just give you the simplest way I know to explain it. This is where you get alone with Jesus. You find you a, a, an isolated spot, a place of solitude, and you clear your mind. And you just imagine yourself sitting at the feet of Jesus and listen. You're not talking. You're not giving requests. You're not praying for anybody. You're just letting your mind listen to Jesus and you want to hear what he has to say. I often pray what Eli told young Samuel to pray and just say to the Lord, Lord, your servant is listening. A lot of our prayers are us talking to God. But truthfully, we need some time during the day, sometime during the day, where you just stop and listen to God. And say, God, what do you want to say to me? And uh, I've had all kinds of experiences during those. I won't talk about them all. Sometimes if I have something that I need to deal with somebody, God brings that person into the room and says, oh, you need to deal with this. And, uh, there may be something else that I need to deal with and he'll bring it up, but he sets the agenda. Sometimes he reveals things to me. He's revealed some incredible things with me in these times of contemplation. Other times I just enjoy his presence. Uh, I'm reminded of Mary, you remember who had a sister named Martha, and she was sitting at the feet of Jesus, soaking everything up. Martha was trying to make lunch for everybody, and she got frustrated that uh, Mary wouldn't uh, help her, but Jesus said, Mary's doing right. And I think it would be right for you to take some time each day just to contemplate the Lord. Another type of prayer that I'm becoming familiar with is what I'm calling visionary prayer. And that's where you just let God show you things. Show you things that he wants you to do or show you things that's about it. I think of Peter when he was in Jaffa at Simon the Peter's house. And he was praying. And he had a vision. And uh, a sheet came down with all kinds of animals. And, and, and lot, they were unclean animals. Animals that a Jew would not eat. And God said, take and eat. And Peter said, no. He said, uh, they're not kosher. I'm not going to eat them. But God said, if I say they're clean, they're clean. And as soon as that vision was done, there were some Gentiles from Cornelius' house who came. And uh, Peter was able to go spread the gospel. And that vision changed the whole church. That's why all of us who are Gentiles now are Christians, are able to become Christians. And along with it is what I call a prophetic prayer. And it goes along with these other two. But when God's showing you some things, when you're thinking God's thoughts after him, sometimes you can begin to speak things into existence. That's called a prophetic prayer. Where, and I do that. And there, there are times, uh, with, for example, the church. Uh, we're repurposing a church at the mall. And I just, when I pray and sometimes I, I see where our church could go with such a location and such a building that we're going to have and all the things I believe God wants to bless us with. And I just pray it into existence. Uh, Rick Warren, when he was uh, trying to publish his book, Purpose Driven Life, they were saying, well, you know, something like this usually sells 100,000 copies. And Rick Warren says, no, we're going to sell millions of copies. And that book ended up being the best-selling uh, nonfiction book outside the Bible ever. And so I believe that we can pray things into existence. And today, maybe you've got something in your life 
that uh, you need to talk with God, get quiet, let God lead you and lead you how to pray. Maybe you've got a wayward child or something, or you've got some problem. Let God let you see the vision and, and prophesy over that and pray prophetically. It'll bless you, and it's a powerful way to pray, and I encourage you to do that every day. God's blessings on you. Pray for our world. Amen.